particular video is about Black Lives Matter leaders practice witchcraft and summon dead spirits. And this is from a black activist and a pastor. And it's, um, it's really fascinating. I just want to give you a little introduction. Black conservative Christian podcast host has claimed that Black Lives Matter movement engages in witchcraft and called on Christians who have allied themselves with the organization to rethink their decision. Abraham Hamilton III, who hosts the Hamilton Corner on the socially conservative American Family Radio, devoted the August 19th episode of his program to highlighting the Black Lives Matter connection to witchcraft. Throughout the podcast, Hamilton argued that Black Lives Matter was not merely another social justice advocacy organization. Instead, he argues that it is a religious movement. Hamilton, who serves as the American Family Association's public policy analyst, began the podcast by criticizing the Black Lives Matter movement as a Marxist, anti-Christ, anti-family, and anti-man organization. What we are witnessing is a copy and paste of the Bolshevik Revolution from Russia, just applied into an American context, he contended. After reminding his listeners that Patrice Cullors was one of the co-founders of the Black Lives Matter movement, described herself as a trained Marxist, Hamilton read aloud a quote from Cullors explaining her point of view on spirituality. I'm calling for spirituality to be deeply radical, Cullors said. We're not just having a social justice movement. This is a spiritual movement. Hamilton played audio from a Zoom-type conversation between Colors and Dr. Melina Abdullah, a professor of African studies at California State University, Los Angeles, who founded the group's LA chapter. The conversation took place in June, shortly after the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. We've become very intimate with the spirits that we call on regularly, Abdullah said in the clip. Each of them seems to have a different presence and personality. You know, I laugh a lot with Wakisha. I didn't meet her in her body, right? I met her through his, this work. Moving on, the Wakisha mentioned by Abdullah refers to Wakisha Wilson, an African-American woman who was found dead in Los Angeles jail back in 2016. Hamilton argues that the conversation proved that Black Lives Matter leaders were summoning the spirits of the dead and using the power of the spirits of the dead in order to give them the ability to do what they're calling the so-called justice work. Hamilton stated that those leaders seeking to summon the spirits of the dead are adhering to the Yoruba religion of Ifa. They are summoning dead spirits, he said. One of the touchstones of this religious practice is ancestral worship. Guess what the Bible calls that, folks? Witchcraft. In the recording, Colors went on to talk about how they were resurrecting the spirits so they can work through, through us to get the work that we need to get done. Sounds Illuminati to me. Witchcraft, Illuminati, Freemasonry. I started to feel personally connected and responsible and accountable to them, both from a deeply political place, but also from a deeply spiritual place. Colors said, in my tradition, you offer things that your loved one who passed away would want, whether it's like honey or tobacco, things like that. It's so important not just for us to be in direct relationship to our people who have passed, but also for them to know we've remembered them. She added, I believe so many of them work through us. Abdullah said that the first thing people do when they hear of murder is pray and pour libation. We built with the community where the person's life was stolen. And it took almost a year for me to realize that this movement is much more than a racial and social justice movement, Abdullah said. At its core, it's a spiritual movement because we're literally standing on spilled blood. The woman proceeded to discuss the meaning behind one of the most common chants associated with Black Lives Matter movement, say her name. When we say the names right, so we speak their names, we say her names, say their names, we do all that all the time that you kind of invoke that spirit, and then those spirits actually become present within you, Abdullah added. Hamilton contended that Abdullah and others really believe that the names of the folks that they are saying have become ancestral gods. Colors said that spirituality is the center of Black Lives Matter. I think that's not just for us. I feel like so many leaders and so many organizers are deeply engaged. A pretty 
important spiritual practice, she said. I don't think I could do this work without that. I don't think I could do it as long as I've done it and as consistently. It feels like if I didn't do that, it would be antithetical, anti-ethical to this work. Hamilton mentioned the chance as an example of spiritual wickedness that the Apostle Paul warned about in Ephesians 6.12. In condemning Black Lives Matter spiritual practices, Hamilton cited Deuteronomy 18. The Old Testament chapter describes those who practice witchcraft or call upon the dead as detestable to the Lord. Before opening up the phone lines to his listeners, Hamilton delivered a message to Christians and churches who have embraced the Black Lives Matter movement. How can you reconcile that with what the Word of God says, he asked. We have got to evaluate everything through the Word of God. So the point here is a lot of people have fallen into that. And it's because also we've got corporations, because we live in a corporocracy or a technocracy, and they're setting the stage. Like you can't come and sell things at our, you know, giant retail store unless you support BLM or, you know, they're deciding. And yet it's anti-Christian, obviously. You can't, you know, it's like with white witchcraft. You can't say because it's white, it's all good. It's still coming from the same place. The power behind all witches, all hexes, any of that stuff, psychics even, is their demons or their uh, wraiths or, you know, some function or element spirit below the demons, but they're still from the dark side and you don't know who they are. That's the thing. Demons can connect with memories. They can connect. They can read your mind. They know what you want before you visit these people. They know how to draw you in. And that's why Ouija boards are coming, you know, straight from demonic sources. Because the power behind it, you ask it a question about the future, for example, it's going to be from a demon. And, you know, one of the greatest lies that the demonic have been able to perpetrate is that they'll, and the mainstream media does this as well, the way to get people to believe something is to give them 99% truth and 1% lie. That's what our mainstream media does to us. Everybody says, well, they said this and it's true, so then that one little thing must be true and that one little thing is pretty big. But that's how they operate. That's what they do. They are tricksters in every sense of the word. And that's why this pastor, when he says, we have to use our discernment and look at everything through the Bible. Because, let me see what he said at the very end here. We've got to evaluate everything through the Word of God. That's what we have. And if you think that the Bible is, you know, been changed somehow by the Illuminati or things taken out, that might be true, but it's still the living Word of God. And I believe God makes sure that what's in there still speaks to us the way He wants it to speak to us. It's all we have. So here is this... Um, podcast and it's from Abraham Abraham Hamilton the third the Hamilton corner and it's on family radio and I'll put the link in the description below I hope you enjoy it and it's definitely something you want to share um, make sure that other people know uh, I would stick this everywhere this podcast or at least this article okay here yep, we go thanks for this he dug this bit of research out for the program he sent this my way he said hey i think you may be interested in this and you were right um so many of us know by now uh the co-founders of the black lives matter organization alicia garza opel tometi and patrice colors uh patrice colors was recorded in 2015 admitting we are trained marxists people like myself and others i'm not the only one uh but we have been saying from the beginning that this blm organization is a marxist organization 
uh, for Christians. I have been saying for quite some time uh, that we don't need some Marxist, anti-Christ, anti-family, anti-man organization to tell us how we should love our neighbors. We have a constitution. It has 66 books <laughs> written over three continents, three primary languages that we don't need some organization to tell us how we need to love our neighbors. And so those who didn't believe me, I said, well, just wait, it'll come out. And this little piece of audio came out where Patrice Cullors admitted what I just told you is clip number seven. Would you please play it, Rob? We actually do have an ideological frame. Um, myself and Alicia in particular are trained organizers. Um, we uh, are trained Marxists. There you have it. We are trained Marxists. We are trained Marxists. Now, do you understand what's going on? What we are witnessing is a copy and paste of the Bolshevik Revolution from Russia, just applied into an American context. In Russia, they didn't have a history of skin color based divisions, chattel slavery, and things of that nature to pull to cause foment, to foment uh, unrest in the country. But what Marxists do is they seek to utilize whatever may be available to foment the unrest because people will voluntarily, in times of chaos, cede freedoms they, they would never allow to be relinquished otherwise. That it is a part, it is endemic to human nature that mankind is more than willing to exchange liberties for protection when they are afraid. Okay. Today's show is not, we're not going to focus so much on their Marxism. I want you to know that the BLM organization's founders, they're trained in more than Marxism. I'll explain it to you the way that they explain it themselves. Let me get, let me get this quote. Let me get this quote. Patrice Cullors, the one you just heard there saying um, <laughs> that she's a trained Marxist and that she and other BLM co-founders are trained Marxists. She says, quote, there are many spiritualities. Sorry, she said, quote, I'm calling for spirituality to be deeply radical. We're not just having a social justice movement. This is a spiritual movement. Huh. End quote. Spiritual movement. What does she mean by that? I'm so glad you asked. I'll start in all of the audio I'm about to share with you now. Well, I see the disrespectful clock, so this is going to carry over to the next segment. Is a Zoom-like conversation between two women. One of them is named Dr. Melina Abdullah. That she is a professor of African studies at California State University, Los Angeles. She's having a Zoom-type conversation with Patrice Cullors. Let me welcome you into their little conversation where she admits Maybe I'm saying too much. Listen to Dr. Melina Abdullah, who's also, in addition to being a professor at California State University, Los Angeles, she's also the founder of the BLM Los Angeles chapter of the organization. Please play clip, uh, clip number one. Maybe I'm sharing too much, but we become very intimate with the spirits that we call on regularly, right? Like each of them seems to have a different presence and personality you know i laugh a lot with wakisha you know and i didn't meet her in her body right yeah. i met her through this work oh lord you she she said she laughs a lot with wakisha who she didn't meet in her body so where you met where you meet you laughing with wakisha where did y'all meet you're gonna find that dr abdullah and patrice colors talks about summoning the spirits of the dead using the power of the spirits of the dead in order to give them the ability to do what they're calling the so-called justice work. You're going to find that what they're describing is their adherence to the Yoruba religion of Ifa or Ifa, to where they are summoning dead spirits. If you think I'm laughing, because you might have heard many people saying, oh, you're making all of this noise about Black Lives Matter. It's just a hashtag. Oh, really? Listen to clip number four. This is Patrice Cullors. 
It's a very important practice. Um, hashtags are, for us, are way more than a hashtag. It is um, literally almost resurrecting a spirit so they can work through us to get the work that we need to get done. I started to feel personally connected and responsible and accountable to them, um, both from a deeply political place, but also from a deeply spiritual place. And um, always, you know, in, our, in, in my tradition, you offer things that, that your loved one who passed away would want, you know, um, whether it's like honey or tobacco, things like that. And that's, it's so important, not just for us to be in direct relationship to our people who've passed, but also for them to re know they've, we've remembered them. Um, I, I believe so many of them work through us. Mm. Now, in case you're wondering who that is speaking, that is Patrice Colors co-founder of the Black Lives Matter organization, the same one you just heard saying, we are trained Marxists. She is describing that, oh, you thought it was just a hashtag. It's more than hashtags. We are summoning our people from the dead. She said, in our tradition. What tradition is that? Where you offer things to people, and as a result of summoning them so frequently, we begin to develop a relationship where I become close with them see you thought it was just a hashtag how many of the people that are turning out for these rallies these marches how many of them do you think know that it's more than a hashtag oh don't go anywhere there's more there is more there is more she is describing their adherence to the yoruba religion called odu ifa o-d-u-i-f-a that one of the touchstones of this religious practice is ancestral worship. Guess what the Bible calls that, folks? Witchcraft. You don't want to miss the rest of this program. The Hamilton Quarter Podcast and One Minute Commentaries are available at AFR.net. Back to the Hamilton Quarter on American Family Radio. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to the Hamilton Corner. We got to get some more in before the disrespectful clock and that disrespectful music comes back on again. So I'm just playing this audio for you of Dr. Melina Abdullah and Patrice Colors. Patrice Colors is one of the co-founders of the national, well, now global BLM organization. Dr. Abdullah is a California State University professor as well as founder of the BLM Los Angeles branch. And they're having a conversation about the spirituality that drives the Black Lives Matter movement. And in case you now don't know it yet, they ain't talking about the Holy Spirit. They're talking about channeling the powers of the ancestors, that it is the spirituality that enables them and empowers them to do this, quote unquote, justice work. I just played audio for you before the break. I may have to play that one again. Well, Patrice Cullors, the same one who admitted that BLM's founders are trained Marxists. That ain't all they trained in. They're not only trained in Marxism, in which, by the way, if you don't know this, Marx himself was a pagan Satanist. So they ain't really that far off the map saying they've trained Marxists and dabbling in a bit of witchcraft. And they wanted you to believe early on that it was just a hashtag. Well, if you thought that what it was, that's what it was, Patrice Cullors, disabused you of that notion rather quickly let's play that audio again to where she said no it's not just hashtags we're resurrecting spirits so they can work through us it's clip number four it's a very important practice um hashtags are for us are way more than a hashtag it is um literally almost resurrecting a spirit so they can work through us to get the work that we need to get done i started to feel personally connected and responsible and accountable to them, um, both from a deeply political place, but also from a deeply spiritual place. And um, always, you know, in, our, in, in my tradition, you offer things that, that Her your loved one who passed away would want, you know, um, whether it's like honey or tobacco, things like that. And that's, 
it's so important, not just for us to be in direct relationship to our people who've passed, but also for them to know they've, we've remembered them. Um, I, I believe so many of them work through us. So many of them work through us. To remind you, this is a Zoom style conversation between Dr. Melina Abdullah and Patrice Cullors. Now I want you to listen to Melina Abdullah, where she describes what happens when they gather. It's clip number two. When we come out into the streets and we pray, you know, the first thing that we do when we hear of a murder is we come out, we pray, we pour libation, we build with the community where um, the person's life was stolen. And it took almost a year for me to realize that this movement is much more than a racial and social justice movement. At its core, it's a spiritual movement because we're literally standing on spilled blood, right? Yeah. And you can't pretend like that's work that's just like some organizing work. That's, you know, that's some serious stuff, right? You can't pretend it's some organizing work. But wait, I thought they were just community organizing. That's what you thought. But wait, there's more. Clip three. When we say the names, right? So we speak their names. We say her name, say their names. We do that all the time. That you kind of invoke that spirit. And then those spirits actually become present with you. Did y'all hear that? Now y'all see all of this, the NBA, all on the jersey, say her name. They're not doing what you think they're doing. You think they're just honoring people. They are conjuring up spirits. There's one particular rally that Dr. Abdullah was conducting and where she repeatedly required, and I'm not going to say the phrase that she used, but what required the audience in a call and response type fashion to chant a name and then she would respond with a Yoruba phrase. See, in this particular rel religion, and as I understand it, it includes an ethnicity, a religion, and a language. But I'm talking about the religious aspects of it to where there's a supreme pagan deity. Then beneath them, there's a pantheon of pagan deities called Orishas. And this is the same demonic activity, by the way, that Beyonce is channeling on that Black is King thing that Disney's put it out, by the way. The exact same thing. Coincidence? And then at the supreme deity, then the Orishas, and then beneath, beneath the Orishas, you have the next level of deities called the ancestors, the Egun. And these people really believe that the names of the folks that they are saying have become ancestral gods that they are, that they are summoning when they require the attendees at these marches and these rallies to say their name. Mm-hmm. Y'all go look it up for yourself. And, and I wanted to play the audio of them discussing this themselves. Because reading it is one thing. But hearing them say it in their own words. You can say Abe is just expressing his opinion. But you can't say that when you hear them say it in their own words. I have more audio for you. Listen to this. As Patrice Culler, Cullors describes that this type of spirituality is at the center of the BLM movement. Clip number six. Spirituality is at the center of Black Lives Matter. Um, and I think that's not just for us. I feel like so many um, leaders and so many organizers um, are deeply engaged in, in a pretty um, important spiritual practice. I don't think I could, I could do this work without that. I don't think I could do it as long as I've done it and as consistently. Um, it feels like if I didn't do that, it would be antithetical to this work. Patrice Cullors is saying if she did not include these EFA spiritual practices in the Black Lives Matter work that she's doing, it would be antithetical for her not to do it. Y'all can get mad at me if you want, but I'm just going to tell it like a T.I. is. Y'all think these people are playing with these chants and the, these chanting and things 
when the Apostle Paul said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness. But against spiritual wickedness, this is what he was talking about. Now, in case you were wondering, I'm just going to highlight one section. In case you have any ambiguity about this notion, because I have some people say, oh, because of uh, this Western prescription, anything that's African, it's inherently viewed as being pagan. That's not the case. But you know what we do? Anything that's practiced, we evaluate it in light of Scripture. Come go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 through 12. The Word of God says this, and this is the Lord speaking to the Israelites as they were approaching the promised land. It says this, when you enter the land which the Lord your God gives you, you shall not learn to imitate the detestable or abominable things of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire to Molech. One who uses divination, one who practices witchcraft, or one who interprets omen, omens or a sorcerer, or one who casts a spell, or a medium, or a spiritist. One who calls up the dead. For whoever does these things is detestable to the Lord. And because of these detestable things, the Lord your God will drive them out before you. The Lord said those who call up the dead are detestable or abominable to him. Yet Patrice Colors and Melina Abdullah want you to say their name. Now you can remember people, but why do we have to chant like this? Why, why, why are you showing up? Why are you showing up and everything is, say their names. And then Melinda Abdullah makes you all say, I say. Then you throw out libations. But it's just a hashtag. Patrice Culler says it's not just a hashtag. We're going to open up the phone lines. 888-589-589. 8840 is the number to call if you want to join the program. I should have gave this number out earlier. 888-589-8840. And I'm speaking specifically to Christians that are being roped into this stuff. How Can you reconcile that with what the Word of God says? I'm not talking about what your opinion is. They are telling you. And this is how it works. Most of the people that were supporting this, this organization, they didn't know that they were trained Marxists. Nor did they know that they were Engaging in witchcraft. But now that you know, what you're going to do about it? They weren't running in saying, hey, by the way, we're summoning the dead spirits to give us the power to do the, to do the justice work. <laughs> man, it's just it's sad, man. It's sad I had somebody comment on the Facebook thread. Man, we have churches that are putting up BLM banners in their churches. In their churches. And I'm saying, Lord, where's the discernment? Where's the discernment? The word of God says, I'm going to read it again. Or one who casts a spell or a medium or a spiritist or one who calls up the dead. For whoever does these things is detestable to the Lord. But they got y'all running around here calling up the dead. Come on, people. Paul said, man, if I or an angel come preaching anything other than the gospel that was entrusted to you, let them be accursed. We have got to evaluate everything through the word of God. And again, the scripture in Deuteronomy that I read, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 through 12. That's not the only one. That's just one of the scripture references. I just used that one to show that this goes all the way back to the Hebrew scriptures. And it's carried forward. This isn't some new prohibition that we know that BLM also supports Planned Parenthood in aborting babies. And it, isn't it interesting that the scripture I read in Deuteronomy said not only are the people who call on the dead abominable, but also those who cause their sons or daughters to pass through the fire. The connection that you just highlighted that, huh, People that's called on the dead, on the dead, some of them are the same folks that are sacrificing their children to Molech. 
That was all the way back in Deuteronomy, folks. It's almost as if this is the inspired word of God and he knew what was coming before it came. Let that sink into your thinking caps. God bless you. Patriots, I just wanted to say thank you to all of those who have supported this channel. I hope you're enjoying the videos, and if you would like to make a donation to support the channel, there is a PayPal link in the description below. And thank you again, and I'll see you on the next video.